Ah, and here you are already. wishes to see if we did his work for him. Is that not why you were here now, sorcerer? Do not call me that, witch. I am keeper of this clan, and have done what I must. Did you acquire the heart? So you wish to play games? I can sense you do not have it. Why are you leaving the ruin? There was no need. I knew you would find it, and I did not care to give you a history lesson about things that have no bearing on your purpose here. But it seems the spirit convinced you to act on her behalf. Might I inquire what she wants? To survive, I suspect. That is the common nature amongst all such creatures. The will to survive. You do understand that she actually is Witherfang? She is the powerful spirit of this ancient forest that I summoned long ago and bound in the body of the wolf. Her nature is that of the forest itself. Beautiful and terrible, serene and savage, maiden and beast. She is the Lady and Witherfang both, two sides of a single being. The curse came first from her. Those she afflicted with it mirrored her own nature, becoming savage beast as well as human. They attacked my clan, and they were the same savages then that they have ever been. They deserve to be wiped out and not defended. Come. I will accompany you back to the ruin. Let us go and speak to the spirit, and I will force her into Witherfang's form. He may then be slain and the heart taken. Why? You claim they have regained their minds, but they are still savage beasts. Their nature is unchanged. All they want is revenge, or a release that I will not give them. No, let us take the heart and end it. You were not there. You did not see what... what, what they did to my son. To my daughter. And so many others. You are not Dalish. How can you know how we had to struggle to be safe? How could I have let their crimes go unanswered? I have sworn to protect my people, and I shall. I will not lift a finger to help the descendants of savages who deserved the curse they received. And what if it is revenge they want, and not talk? Will you safeguard me from harm? I fail to see the purpose behind this, but very well. It has been many centuries now. Let us see what the spirit has to say. So here you are, spirit. <sighs> she is the lady of the forest. You will address her properly. You've taken a name, spirit? And you've given names to your pets? These beasts who follow you? It was they who gave me a name, Zathrian. And the names they take are their own. They follow me because I help them to find who they are. Who they are has not changed from whom their ancestors were. Wild savages, worthless dogs, 
Their twisted shape only mirrors their monstrous hearts. He will not help us, lady. It is as I warned you. He is not here to talk. No, I am here to talk, though I see little point in it. We all know where this will lead. Your nature compels it, as does mine. It does not have to be that way. There is room in your heart for compassion, Zathrian. Surely your retribution is spent. My retribution is eternal, spirit. As is my pain. This is justice, no more. Are you certain your pain is the only reason you will not end this curse? Have you told the mortal how it was created? And so he did. Witherfang and I are bound as one being, but such powerful magic could not be accomplished without Zathrian's own blood. Your people believe you have rediscovered the immortality of their ancestors, Zathrian, but that is not true. So long as the curse exists, so do you. No! That is not how it is! No. The curse has a life of its own, though Zathrian's life depends on it. His death plays a part in its ending, however. Then we kill him! We tear him apart now! For all your powers of speech, you are beasts still. What would you gain from killing me? Only I know how the ritual ends, and I will never do it. Ha! You see? We must kill them all! See? They turn on you as quickly. Do what you have come here to do, Grey Warden, or get out of my way! No, don't do this! Have you all gone mad? We are doing what we have to. I'm so sorry. Then you die with him! Well done, Grey Warden. You have succeeded in your task. Small chance of that. But Lanaya knows how to use the heart to cure the hunters. So my people would have survived. Shall we leave now?
She is my first. Of course she does. What of it? Manuvinen, I shall speak to you when you return to the camp. I shall do it. It shall be done. It has begun.
Very well. It is begun. Very well.
Ah, you are the Grey Warden, the one who slew Witherfang and cured our hunters. I am Panawin. My husband numbered amongst those who did not survive to receive your cure. We are here seeking stragglers to mete out justice. Allow me to give you a token of thanks. My clan owes you a great deal. I will be there when we go to war at your side. What manner of beast is this? Begun. It shall be done. It is begun. It is done. The essence of the wolf's heart appears to have banished all trace of the cursed blood from the hunters. Let me say it officially. I hereby swear to uphold the terms of the ancient contract our people formed with the Grey Wardens. You are very fortunate, Methalan. You were very close to death. Yet, I remember so little. How long was we I We are Ill? building equipment no, and gathering as many of the Dalish together you have as we the can. Warden to thank but for it will recovery. be some time before we so can join So it him. seems. I hope to fight against these dark spawn if I recover quickly enough. 
so the hunters were cured. But not in time for my Denyla. By the creators. Denyla's scarf. Zathrian said she was killed by the same curse plaguing the others. Where is she now? So I was right. But what became of her? She told you that. Yes. That is what she would do. <sighs> at least she is at peace. Here, take this amulet. I hope it is worth something to you as a reward. Now I should go and make arrangements. I must mourn my wife as is proper. Dareth Shiral, fare you well. We are working hard to make enough equipment for all of the hunters. Our armaments will be superior to anything else you find on the battlefield. Truly? Let me see. Yes, that is indeed iron bark, and a substantial quantity of it as well. Well done. An agreement is an agreement, and I will craft something from this wood for you. What would you like? A bow? Or perhaps a breastplate? I must admit I'm surprised to witness such generosity from an outsider. You have my thanks, and the thanks of my clan for this gift. I will not allow your generosity to go without at least some reward. Come, I shall make something of the wood you bring. I've reformed the wood to my will. It is but a small token of our gratitude, but take it with my blessing.
Let us pray to the creators, Letheline. All Father, may you forgive our part in this tragedy. Would our sons and daughters have died if not for our pride? Falandine, friend of the dead, may you guide our sons and daughters safely into the beyond. And most of all, he who hunts alone, the dread wolf. He will come for us in the end, but today he turned a blind eye. And for that, we are thankful. For we are the Dalish, the keepers of the lost lore, the walkers of the lonely path. And never again shall we submit. I have been charged by the Keeper to seek out other Dalish clans in Ferelden, so we may spread the word about the Blight. Darth Shiral, fare you well. We owe you thanks for all you've done. Without you, our clan would be grieving the loss of many more hunters now. You did it, outsider. You saved us from the ravages of the curse, after all. May the creators bless you, truly. Now, Keeper Lanaya prepares for us to enter into war alongside the humans. I never thought I'd live to see the day. I, for one, look forward to fighting against these darkspawn creatures. Do you now? Let's hope you return and tell us all about them. As for you, outsider, I expect I'll be telling tales about the Grey Warden one day, hmm? I've only just returned to the clan, and from the news, half expected to find everyone I love dead. Thank the creators, this is not so. Come to check on my Hala and I again, have you? I don't know. Do you have any skills that might help her? If you do, I would be grateful. Then, I appreciate your concern, but it is time for me to be alone with her. What now? Come to check on my Hala and I again, have you? Of course. Yes?
I understand we will be joining you in battle as soon as the hunters have recovered. I look forward to it. It seems I must prepare myself to leave the clan once more. I was so close to changing. It was so horrible. Anathara, Grey Ward. Hello. I'm not afraid of you. I'm a great Dalish warrior. Thank the Maker the Dalish have given us refuge here amongst them. So, you are the Grey Warden who go. is supposed to save us? I never thought I would hear of an outsider who would ever do anything for us. The old crafts are a wonder. Our ancestors believed that everything should be beautiful. We are working hard to make enough equipment for all of the hunters. Our armaments will be superior to anything else you find on the battlefield. I am no merchant, but I have plenty that you may need. It shall be as you say. Why are you here? Excuse me? 
Obviously, you are no priestess, but shouldn't you be running a shop or a farm somewhere rather than fighting? You think to tell me my place, Kunari? You are very brave. It is not done. But it is done. Do not be such a blind fool. I speak the truth. It is not I who is blind. Look around you, then. You see women throughout this land, fighters and mages both. That has yet to be proven. Which? That they fight? Or that they are female? Either. So I am not truly a woman to you, hmm? It is good to know. I have been studying Mother's Grimoire. Do you wish to hear what I have found? Tis not what I expected. I had hoped for a collection of her spells, a map of the power that she commands. But this is not it. Disturbed? Yes, perhaps that is the right word. One thing in particular within her writings disturbs me. Here, in great detail, Flemeth explains the means by which she has survived for centuries. Oh, if only it were so. Flemeth has raised many daughters over her long lifetime. There are stories of these many witches of the wilds throughout Chastened Legend, yet I have never seen a one, and always wondered why not. And now I know. They are all Flemeth. When her body becomes old and wizened, she raises a daughter, and when the time is right, she takes her daughter's body for her own. I do not know. Perhaps tis as she said, the Darkspawn threaten her as much as they threaten anyone else. Or perhaps she believes that this journey will make me more powerful. According to the tome, if the host is already powerful and trained in magic, it takes far less time for Flemeth to settle in. Indeed. That is primarily what this tome details. The various daughters that Flemeth has acquired. Their preparation and training. I recognize all of it. I am to be her next host. This is my purpose. Do not be sorry. I am not. I am angry. There is only one possible response to this. Flemeth needs to die. I will not sit about like an empty sack waiting to be filled. Flemeth must be slain, and I need your help to do it. And what would that do? At best, I would receive pointless reassurances. At worst, Flemeth would imprison me once she became aware I know what I do. 
I know my mother well enough to be confident she would show no mercy when it came to her own survival. I must do the same. It may seem so. If you think of Flemeth as a mother, think of her instead as an ancient abomination that intends to use her own flesh and blood to extend her life beyond all natural limits. She did not wish anyone to get a hold of this information, least of all me. Now I have. If I do not act on what I know, then more the fool am I. Because if she is slain while I am near, I am not certain that she will not simply be able to take possession of me right there. So obviously I cannot be the one to do it. Then what needs to be done is for you to go back to Flemeth's hut in the Kakari wilds without me. Confront her and slay her quickly. I doubt she would truly be dead even then, but it will take her years to find a new host and recover her power, if that is even possible. The thing I must have is her true grimoire. With it, I can defend against her power in the future. Everything else in her hut is yours. Not really, but the sooner the better, no? She would like everyone to think she is invincible, but I highly doubt that is the case. And besides that, you are not truly killing her. I am grateful. The sooner this can be done, the sooner it will set my mind at ease. You witness the rarest of things, Warden. The Dalish stand ready to defend Ferelden. We have assembled on a short schedule. Certain factors of equipment could be better. Crafting components would serve best. Basic ones like elf root and deep mushroom. The Circle of Magi stands ready to assist, Grey Warden, as do the Templars of the Chantry. There are always areas to improve on, Grey Warden. The most useful for my talents are runes. Have you encountered many abominations, apart from the ones in the Circle Tower? Ah, yes, Connor, of course. The first time I saw an abomination, my blood turned to ice. It was months before the nightmares stopped. It was the knowledge that I could easily become one of them that frightened me the most. Every mage is vulnerable, no matter how accomplished or powerful. That is the first thing we learn and overconfidence can lead to recklessness. One slip. All it takes is one slip, and everything you are is simply gone, replaced by madness. And there is no turning back, or at least that's what they say. Of late, I have begun to wonder if... if there is any way an abomination can be... cured. Or, if a mage could be so possessed and still retain their sanity, their humanity. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. It is madness and cruelty that define abominations. If the assaulted march. Why? Why wouldn't I remember them dying? You have ears, but you use them only to hear the sound of your... I never saw that. Thank you for showing me another way of looking at it. Generous gift. Your dog is filthy. I can smell him 50 yards off. That may be so, but all the same, I would like your permission to bathe him. Excellent. I will get my soaps, and the dog shall have his bath after supper. I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. 
I know little enough of the Dalish other than the fact that my mother was one, or so I was told. She had fallen in love with an elven woodcutter and accompanied him back to the city, leaving her clan behind for good. And there, of course, the woodcutter died of some filthy disease and my mother was forced into prostitution to pay off his debts. All is tale in the book. Is it? It seemed normal enough a tale growing up. No different than the other elven boys in the whorehouse. I didn't know my mother either, of course. She died giving birth to me. My first victim, as it were. We were all raised communally by the whores. It was a happy enough existence, ignoring the occasional beating. Until eventually I was sold to the crows. I brought a good price, so I hear. That's very kind of you to say, but it is not necessary. It could have been much worse. Shall I tell you about what happened to the other whorehouse boys who did not fetch a decent price with the crows? Surely your life has not been so idyllic. People like you and I are not the product of happy lives of contentment, after all. <sighs> my original point is that my mother's Dalish nature was always a point of fascination for me. Through all the years of my crow training, the one thing of my mother's that I possessed was a pair of gloves. They were of Dalish make, I knew that much, and beautiful. I had to keep them hidden, of course, as we were not allowed such things. Eventually, they were discovered, and I never saw them again. I don't feel anything about them. Oh, we heard about them in the city, even deep in Antiva. I even had the notion once to run off and join them. Naturally, the reality did not live up at all to the fantasies I had constructed as a boy, staring at those gloves. But, such is life. Come, enough talk of the Dalish. Let us move on. Gloves? You're giving me gloves? What for? I... Maker's breath. You're right. It is like my mother's. The leather was less thick, and it had more embroidery, but these are very close. And quite handsome. Do I seem surprised? Perhaps I am. Still, I appreciate the fact that you even thought of me. No one has simply given me a gift before. Thank you. Yes? Well, here I am. What is meant by someone like me? And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering Cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, they were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? Fruit? Well, it is not technically forbidden, but, but it's not freely given either. Not everyone gets a bite. I can't believe I'm having this conversation. <clears throat> but no, I did not take vows. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. We affirm our belief in the Maker, in Andraste and the Chant, but other than that, there are no vows taken.
I was a traveling minstrel in Orlais. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. That's a wonderful thought. I don't know what to say. What do you need? <laughs> Ask away. Essentially, they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. You could call it that, sure. Chantry doesn't look on it the same way, however, since really our talents only work on mages. Against a regular person, I'm just a guy in a metal suit. Perhaps, but there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the lyrium trade with the dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. Well, they do it, and they feel perfectly justified. You don't need Lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. Yes. I am hardly surprised. Very well. Speak then. Ours wear the faces of men. No, they do not have the excuse of demons within them. Darkspawn, abominations, plagues and storms. Men are far more dangerous than these. One moment of betrayal can bring more ruin than an earthquake. You know this. They are Talvashoth. They say they are Grey Ones. True in the knowledge of themselves. They are gaping holes where men used to be. Nothing can fill them. There was a village in the mountains of Seheron. Farmers. They grew cinnamon and nutmeg trees in perfectly ordered rows. There would always be one person waiting, a foreman, a harvester, rank didn't matter. Often they would say nothing. Simply watch as we worked to examine the empty house, a new one each time, that had once been the home of a colleague, a friend. We always made a point of searching. Now and then a body would turn up in a river eaten by rain and crows. More often we found nothing. Even in the worst parts of the jungle, the villagers would send someone with us to see the tiniest piece of bone or cloth. Anything contained the possibility of their lost friend. 
Must we speak of this? We could be fighting something. As you wish. If there's anything I can do for you, please, please tell me. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. Enchantment? Enchantment! Yes? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? old. Have no mistake of that. Tell me, how much do you know of the tale? The one that the chastened still tell of my mother, to frighten them into obedience. Ah, I see. That does explain much. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. As the tale is sung by the bards, there was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful, a fair lass in a land of barbarian men, the desire of any who saw her. Many centuries before this land was even named Ferelden. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osun the Bard, 
and fled the castle of her husband, the dread Lord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In truth, my mother claims that t'was Osun who was her husband, and Conobar the jealous lord who looked on from afar. Lord Conobar approached young Osun and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife, and Osun agreed. The life of a bard is a poor one, and love fades in the wake of hunger. It was Flemeth who suggested the arrangement. All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. Osun was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and swore revenge. That was not the point. Conobar had no honor, so she would not have him. Flemeth begged the spirits to aid her, and t'was they who slew Conobar. The demon the legend tells of came later. Lord Conobar's allies chased Flemeth, you see. Chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the lowlands centuries later. All lies. The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner, and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people, and later claimed it was to vanquish evil that had taken root amongst the lords. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the Chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. I do not believe everything that Flemeth claims. Oft it seems her bitterness has colored her memories. But on the whole, yes, I believe this tale, if not all. The demon within her has transformed her into something else. An abomination, perhaps, some would say. I know not. I only know my mother is clever, and she is part of the wilds as it is part of her. But she is no immortal. She bleeds. A blade in her heart would kill her like any other, were it lucky enough to find her. You ask if I have sisters? I have asked of this myself. The stories tell of many witches of the wilds, after all, not just the one. And these tales existed long before I did. Flemeth refuses to speak of other daughters, if they existed. So, should I believe I am her first? I doubt that too. The Chastened tell of a falling out between Flemeth and her daughters. They say that one day she hunted them all through the wilds and ate their hearts. It may be true. I have never seen another witch or heard of one. Perhaps one day Flemeth will eat my heart as well. How often is this usually? Always? If not always, then when is it not true? There are more things in this world and the next than you or I could ever hope to understand. What Flemeth became is a mystery, I suspect, even to her. Flemeth tells it with far more embellishment than I, but you are welcome. Dare I ask of your own mother, 
Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious nevertheless. Ah, oh, then you have my sympathies for what it is worth. Which is very little, I am certain. It matters not. Let us move on. I am grateful. Yes. Yes. Indeed. And so you return. 
Lovely Morrigan has at last found someone willing to dance to her tune. Such enchanting music she plays, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Which one, I wonder? What has Morrigan told you? Hmm? What little plan has she hatched this time? That she does. The question is, do you? Ah, but it is an old, old story. One that Flemeth has heard before, and even told. Let us skip right to the ending, shall we? Do you slay the old wretch as Morrigan bids, or does the tale take a different turn? Morrigan wishes my grimoire. Take it as a trophy. Tell her I am slain. I go. Perhaps I surprise Morrigan one day. Or I may simply watch. It would be interesting to see what she does with her freedom. Enlightening, even. Would you give an old woman that? We believe what we want to believe. It's all we ever do. <laughs> you get to keep her for a time. Shame. What will it be, then? It is a dance poor Flemeth knows well. Let us see if she remembers the steps. Come. She will earn what she takes. I'd have it no other way.
As you say. Blight, how will you end it? You say you are a Grey Warden. I have heard stories of this order. Great strategists and peerless warriors, that is what we hear of the Wardens. So far, I am not impressed. Will you make that excuse to the Archdemon, or the victims it claims in the meantime? Yes? Mother's real grimoire, is it? I am glad you were able to find it after all. My thanks for retrieving it. I shall begin studying it immediately and unlock the power that it holds. Cold in my tent, all alone. So you shall come to my tent? But whatever shall we do in that tiny little space together while we wait for it to warm? Good, then let us waste no more time with foolish talk. I see the stories they tell of Grey Warden endurance are not exaggerated. <laughs> Indeed there are. The unanswered question, of course, is whether the endurance exists because of the taint within you, or because the Grey Wardens are by nature so very healthy. I enjoy the thought that tis a little of both. Natural prowess, driven by a darker side.
That is entirely up to you. Simply know that I have no designs on your independence. I wish only to do what I desire, and if that coincides with what you desire, then so be it. And should you decide not to continue our misadventure, then so be it. Very simple, is it not? Oh, now you ruin the mood by speaking profanities. Silly man. Come then, let us be off before the others begin to stare. <laughs> 